there is a pond that you can almost barely see uh, just below these trees and fed by water coming off the hillside. Could be a better pond. Hopefully I can grow algae for chickens. There's our hillside. In the foreground, going across is our little creek. That makes a left turn. That section of fence goes back towards that tree, little creek. <coughs> Babbling brook. Pasture. We're probably not doing anything except how does a pond or ponds work along this little stream. And again, the area where we're working could include this foreground area on this upcoming up, up to the road and out to that pasture hillside there. Uh, this area uh, uh, that has the taller grasses still is pretty wet. And if you look at some of the Google Maps, uh, different years, you see a meandering straight towards us, parallel to the, oh, there I am. Little brook runs here. And then parallel to it coming toward us, uh, you can see uh, like a dry st stream bed sort of thing. So I don't know, maybe that's some place like we could grow rice. It's a Korean uh, culture zen. Maybe we should grow rice. Oh, yeah. So then the little brook comes across, and we had the uh, freezing rain, and the evergreen is all 
dropped down into the frozen bed of the stream, the babbling brook. Is not babbling right now, or is it? Okay, let's go see the animals in there, in the barnyard. This video is about drainage. Here's the house and the road. And can you see that there's, where am I? Oh, here he is. Water running out this way, meandering. And it passes through the field at least in some images. And so that water's flowing today. The ground is frozen, things are melting. And it goes this way. So it comes out through this area. And, but here, it comes down this little slope. To the north of the foam pole, there's some water coming from the left. But we got water, then that's the bottom of this little valley here where the water is. And then it goes back towards the smaller stump on the right where it's coming down off our hill here. All right, the line where the tree line is being taken out. Yeah, and it's come that way and across where the corner of the building will be and across the road, parking lot, driveway. And comes across here into this lowest area next to the creek and it doesn't go right toward the creek but it stays in this lower flat area where you see the grass wasn't mowed and the browner plant remains in there so that was always wetter and then it heads out toward the road heads meanders to the north and doesn't, you know, meets the stream somewhere there across our, uh, we got a lawn there too. So how does that impact uh, how we work with that and a road that's coming from a driveway that's coming just from the right of this evergreen here. At the corner of uh, the end of the, <clears throat> fencing, you see with the gap of the fence on the other side, right from in there somewhere, crosses a little stream, comes here, comes across here, towards the pole, and of course crossing this. In the summer, we sat down here, you see that whiter spot, there's wood chips underneath it. We sat our morning meditation and looked out at this pasture and, oh my goodness, talk about one with nature. The barn still says Rosebank Angus Barn. The chickens and goats are inside here for the winter. The goats, uh, since they were eating baby trees, have been are in here all the time. Though there's a temporary fence that's not temporary enough. Um, over here you see those posts. It's electric. It's too hard to move. So I guess there's better ones. 
and the goats are not real keen on being moved. So something to learn there. <laughs> Two goats, Susie and Daisy. Susie, Daisy. Here we go, chickens. The chicken house uh, was moved different places last summer. And there guinea hens. They've got their own house in back, but refuse to use it right now. And ah, there on top of the old hay are our four decks. There were six, we're down to four. And that's Linus. He used to be the big tough rooster until he got into it with the dog. And now he's an outcast. And there's a different rooster in charge, but he's all right. Catching some water. Let's see, sorry. Quick look inside the barn. The hay loft upstairs, I'm gonna build some stairs to that door and it's a nice big room. We'll get to that one day. This was for a bull. This is hay they cleaned out, not the bale, but the pile. Uh, when they cleaned out the barn, our guys, and so we're using it for bedding. These are the old, uh, the old milking parlor and it's storage and storage for us is always a mess. All righty. My old machine shed or tractor barn. This pole has underground wires going back to the house and it needs another wire. So we're gonna have to dig a trench, I hope. Not me personally. Uh, one of our residents is uh, using sticks that are plentiful to put around new trees she's planted and to find certain beds. So in this bed, there's uh, a bunch of different, you know, a couple different raspberries and strawberries started. And I think we'll use those, you know, the uh, suckers or babies off those uh, to plant those things elsewhere. And Here's another one that doesn't have anything in it. Um, plenty of fields. These fields are all planted with a cover crop with a couple of different clovers, turnips, and a couple other things to build the soil. So this used to be corn. You look at the Google Maps, you can see it being corn or having been corn and the fields and the distance there on the other side of the road and all, uh, that was always pasture. So there's a big yard here with mature trees and I can imagine some kind of um, uh, you know, pavilion, you know, like in some pavilion, uh, some kind of open pavilion. Maybe it has a roof, maybe it has mosquito netting available. Anyway, there's mature trees. <coughs> and so now we're approaching uh, sort of the raw area. Compost. 
veggie beds, grapes and garlic and uh, baby trees. So I'll get some numbers on how big this all is. Let me go over here because All right, so north. South, you see this sort of a line of these mature trees and a brushy kind of tree line that went up the hills. Not quite a line, but close. And that new building, here's that tree. That tree might show up on satellite. This pin is one corner of the building. So maybe the building goes straight across this way. That pole uh, shows up on the maps that I've sent already. And we see this far uh, stump up there. Uh, it's, I don't know, maybe three feet tall there. That might be the back corner. All right, just to give you an idea of the size. And I think it comes half, three quarters of the way toward that electric pole. Okay. This video is about drainage. Here's the house and the road. And can you see that there's, where am I? Oh, here he is. Water running out this way, meandering, and it passes through the field, at least in some images. So that water's flowing today. The ground is frozen. Things are melting. And it goes this way. So it comes up through this area. And, but here, it comes down this little slope. To the north of the foam pole. There's some water coming from the left. But we got water, then that's the bottom of this little valley here where the water is. And then it goes back towards the smaller stump on the right where it's coming down off our hill here. Right, the line where the tree line is being taken out. Yeah. And it's come that way and across where the corner of the building will be and across the road, parking lot, driveway. And comes across here into this lowest area next to the creek and it doesn't go right toward the creek but it stays in this lower flat area where you see the grass wasn't mowed and the browner plant remains in there so that was always wetter and then it heads out toward the road heads meanders to the north and doesn't you know meets the stream somewhere there across our uh, we got a lawn there too. 
So how does that impact uh, how we work with that and a road that's coming from a driveway that's coming just from the right of this evergreen here. At the corner of uh, the end of the <coughs> fencing, you see with a gap of the fence on the other side, right from in there somewhere, crosses a little stream, comes here, comes across here towards the pole and of course crossing this elevations. And it starts to go downhill. I feel like this is a, a stream bed here. Occasionally has water. And he goes down to the brook right there. Goes into the brook. Now, there's water. Let's see, here there's more water. out of this area we don't mow and meanders back back to that woods but also see where it's whiter here when it's, there was a lot of melting and there's the rain that came with the freezing rain and the ground's frozen and the water came from the bottom of the hill and off the flat area and past this pole and it goes this way. It's all very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the plan has a driveway to the new building starting near that corner where the fence on this side ends or across from the opening on this side and running toward me and through here somewhere yet to be defined. I would imagine they'd want to put it on the higher ground as opposed to the lower ground and going towards that uh, power line, power pole, um, where there'll then be a parking lot. Uh, so how can we work with that? I would like to 
uh, do plantings, or I imagine what if we did some kind of plantings along this brook before it goes off our property so that water is being filtered more with your uh, the accumulators they've talked about and my boss has an uh, idea to put a a pond uh, along the stream here where this all right, it's low, there's a lot of tall brush, um, but it's a real low spot on the other side of the fence. And I heard in class that we don't want to put dams across little streams or any streams. Um, so I'd like to be able to make that argument. And as a water uh, piece, could there be a, a pond with no dam? Yeah. So there's a little rise over there, different low spots we can take advantage of and so forth. Okay. walking paths. I think there'll be a lot. the farmhouse barns see a silo through the woods through that brush buckthorn maybe you can see these the existing bed has those posts with a fence road coming into the little valley looking uh, west and toward the south. White line is swales.
friends fertilizing top of the south field and looking north you might be able to see the top of the farmhouse there US, USGS map show this is pretty flat on top and it's not. It slopes back towards the tree line and that's the uh, edge of our property right there. And then it slopes the other way <coughs> to the north and obviously so. so-called road here's the uh, swale that's up here it drains water from uh, this is a wet area where there's tall grass and it's dry on top and then gets wet right here that flow out this way towards this flat area which is real uh, just stony walk along further down the road this wheel flows this way down top of the hill this well this uh, yellower area is very wet most of the growing season and here we see the swale is dry but when there's water it flows uh, left to right and in fact look at the wet towards that end and at that far end it's actually full how about that interesting spreads out A little further.
kind of steep there. Me and deer walk along here. That's it. Here's that line of swales. Okay, so in that corner where there's a couple stumps or maybe it, hopefully it's where this pile of brush is, is a 9,000 square foot, one story building. Filling up, oh, I don't know, 25% of that flat area with the snow on it. It's got more snow showing because it got, it was mowed. And here in the center is uh, some uh, compost bins and eight garden beds surrounded by a fence and some grape arbor with some garlic planted in front currently. <laughs>